Okay, welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, the villagers, welcome back. And for you new people, in this video, she's gonna talk about what? Crap. <laughs> Five health checks to do before breeding season. <laughs> Welcome to Simon Says Farms. My name's Aaron. I'm Liz. And the villagers, welcome back. And for you new people, hit that subscribe button because in this video, we're gonna talk about... The five health checks you must do on your goat before breeding. All right, here we go. Okay. It is early September and we're starting to think about drying up our goats and getting them ready for breeding season, which will happen around the beginning of fall. And there are some things that we have to check our girls to make sure that they are healthy enough to even be bred. So we do this checklist to ensure they're healthy enough to sustain a pregnancy without compromising their own bodies. We're gonna go through those five checklists right now. The five health checks that we like to look over our goats for is their coat and their body condition, their eyelids, fecal exam, and increase their nutrition. Now, we'll go over this in more detail, but that's a high level checklist. First on our list is looking over your goat's body condition and the quality of their coat. So let's get a goat and I will show you what I'm talking about. Hey, Moo, come on, girl. Do you wanna be my volunteer? I thought so. Okay. She has no idea where to go. Right up here. You get a cookie or a peppermint for volunteering, and you'll get one after, but only if you've done a good job, okay? okay? You should have been ready for your video. Okay, there you go. So we're looking at Moo here, and we're looking at her coat and her overall body condition. And how we do that is we run our hands over the top line, and I'm feeling to, to, to see how sharp it is. Also over her ribs, I wanna be able to feel her spine I want to be able to feel her ribs, but I don't want to have it be sharp or pointy, meaning her hip bones here, I can feel them and I can move the skin over top, but they're not sticking out so much that they're protruding or very sharp angles. It's the same with her top line, especially right here over her girth and her withers. It's a little sharp here and that's fine, but it's really over this loin area down into the chine. Actually, this is the chine, then the loin, excuse me. And then her hips and her tailbone. It all feels good. So there's a ranking of body condition score from I believe one to five, one being very emaciated and, uh, and malnourished all the way up to five, which is, you know, chunky monkey status. Moo usually falls in the four range and sometimes depending on the season, she can be a little chunky monkey. She's actually in a solid four right now is what I would categorize her at. She's not protruding at all, but her spine isn't missing either, um, which sometimes she gets to, that would be obese. If I run my hands along her sides where her ribs are, I can feel them, but I cannot see them. I can feel the differ differentiating, like the highs and the lows, so each individual rib but when I look at her from afar, I can't see them at all. So that's good. She's got a nice wide barrel, a nice deep barrel that's more conformational, but she's holding a lot of weight. And right now she's actually nursing one of her babies from the spring still. So the fact that she looks like this and we're about a month out from breeding is all really good. You also wanna check the coat of your goat, goat coat. And run your hands over it. It should be smooth and shiny, not rough or wiry. All the hair should look like it's just laying in place and it's got a nice sheen to it. If your coat is looking, not yours, but the goat's, coat is looking a little rough and ragged, it's not laying nicely, uh, it's another indication that you might wanna go and run a fecal test. Next, we're gonna move on to eyelids and I'm actually gonna get a different volunteer for that. So we're here with our next volunteer. This is Sadie. She's a La Mancha, hence the uh, no ears. No, we didn't cut them off. Our next health check is to check their eyelids. And what you wanna do is pull down the lower lid here 
and make sure that it is nice and salmon pink. So her eyelids look good. Um, it's, I know it might be a little hard to see on a camera. There's um, a scale of Fomancha scale, which is the colors that go from a nice rich salmon pink all the way down to white and what those colors mean. Salmon pink being that they're super healthy and there's no issues with worms all the way down to white, meaning they're very anemic and need veterinary care right away. So hers are, I would say, are between like a four and a five. They're, hi Sadie. They're not super, super pink, but they're not, and the lighting is not that great in here, but she's, uh, she's doing good. So based on that, our next, health check is to run fecals. Step one and step two will determine whether or not you even need to do a fecal. But if they didn't pass the first two health checks, then the third health check is to run the fecal. If you're not quite sure how to get a fecal sample from your goat, um, we'll throw a link up above um, on how to collect a stool sample from your goat. Health check number four is to do a quick hoof trimming. So now's your chance to pick up your goat's hoofs, take a quick look. If they need to be trimmed, trim them back now because during breeding season, the last thing you wanna do is send your girl in to be bred with a big stinky buck and realize, oh, she really needs her hoofs trimmed. And now she's covered in the buck's little cologne and she's stinky. About, you know, two, three weeks before breeding season, is a good time to trim those hooves up nice and pretty so that when she goes in with the boys, she doesn't need to be touched there for a couple more weeks. When they get close to drying up, you actually decrease their nutrition to help dry their milk up. The less calories they consume, the less milk they're going to make. But about three weeks before you breed your goat, you actually want to increase their nutrition back up because it will help flush their system and make more healthy eggs. So we have found that this process will bring them into a stronger heat, it will release more eggs, viable eggs, and then they'll settle the first time around instead of it taking a couple months. So hopefully you liked this video and found it informational. This is just part one of our goat breeding series. The next part will be about signs to watch out for when your goat is getting ready to come into heat. Please subscribe, like our video, and hopefully we will see you for part two. Down. Okay. <laughs> I can't do this. Uh, okay, you away. still Not have even. to talk good. No, you you got to talk pronunciate. You're gonna I, I remember, blow out my eardrum. I remember my music teacher in middle school, pronunciation. Okay, I remember my choir teacher saying, sing to the little lady in the back row. I'm not little, I'm not old, and I'm, I am a lady, but I'm right here. Uh, okay, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Welcome to the channel. My name's Aaron. I didn't know this was a quiz. All right, we're gonna try that again. <laughs>